All right, so uh, what did communist, communists use to light their homes before candles? Electricity. All right, our next speaker is going to be Chris Brumbles. He created the first and second, or sorry, the first Second Amendment sanctuary for the nation. Chris Brumbles retired from contracting in 2006, and the lack of a six and seven day work week gave him eyes, gave him, gave him time to open his eyes and become awakened to the tyranny that surrounds us. Chris was part of Oath Keeper leadership in Oregon until a few years ago when he resigned and founded a three percent group in Oregon. Chris has been the county coordinator for Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no compromise gun group in Oregon for many years and is also the Northern Coordinator for the Second Amendment Sanctuary Movement in Oregon. That's a movement that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, we tried that actually in Spokane Valley and it didn't pass. Uh, he has numerous appearances on radio and podcasts and contributes to readout news as well as many newspapers. Fighting for Liberty is his full-time duty and his passing it on to his grandchildren is his passion and it is his only job. So Chris, go ahead and join us on the podium. Hey, well, it's an honor to <clears throat> excuse me. It's an honor to be here tonight or today, and uh, you know it's really good to be here because we got a little war going with the left and right, and they hate Idaho because you know you turn on side looks like a gun. I want to start with two quotes if I could. The first one by the father of our country, George Washington, and he said, "The government <clears throat> is it's it's not." If I don't screw it up, uh, been saying this all day, but I'm Come out of here. Let me start with the other one. William, William Pitt III. Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human liberty, or human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants, it is the creed of slaves. So George Washington said the government is not reason, it is not eloquence. It is a dangerous, it's, it's force. It's a dangerous servant, it's a fearful master. Those two quotes tell you everything you need to know about this media driven scamdemic we just went through. <clears throat> there are no emergency clauses in the Constitution. None. And by the way, I'm going <laughs> to tell y'all that there are no constitutional rights here in a minute. No offense. But I said, as I said, there's no emergency clauses in the Constitution. Our, our founders were way too smart for that. They knew if you put emergency clauses, everything would be an emergency. Which brings me into Oregon, which is what I come talk to you all about. I want to tell you a little bit about where they're at, how they got there, and what we're doing. So, about two, well, first of all, Oregon, every, 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 you know, they got a supermajority there, and every bit of legislation they write, they put an emergency clause in, because that way the people can't repeal it. So there goes back to, that's why the founders didn't put an emergency clause in the Constitution. So back in 2015, the winds of tyranny were turned to gale faith force winds in Oregon. And we, st we tried a lot of things to block the left from taking our state over. But Bloomberg came in and started throwing money around. He took over the Senate. So we immediately responded with trying to recall six people. It's a big chore, especially when they have all the money and we have nothing. <laughs> so I read, I was reading it, I, I noticed a friend of mine, Rob Taylor, was doing a Second Amendment preservation ordinance down in Coos County. So I drove down there and we had about a four hour lunch and he taught me how to do it. I was the second guy to do it. And what the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance tell, does is it makes it illegal for the county sheriff to enforce unconstitutional gun laws since 2012. Now the reason we did this because we had already we had just had our first nefarious gun law, it was SB 941, which is says you have to get a background check on your own private property. And we all know what that's for, right? Get a list and confiscation. So, I, I started, I started, I became the Northern Coordinator of the Safe Bowl Movement because it's near and dear to my heart. Because the you know, Second Amendment is the palladium of, of liberty. If you don't have the Second Amendment, you don't have anything. I'll take it all. <clears throat> so we got 10, 
Last election cycle, we got 10 of these on the ballot, 10 signals. Passed eight of them. The left was screaming the world was going to open up, the sun was going to crash into the earth. So far, nothing has been pretty good for us. But then we had a couple more gun laws come along. SB 917, which is the red flag law, violates the 2nd, 4th, 5th, 6th, possibly 7th, 9th, and 14th Amendment. Everybody knows what a red flag law is, right? Now, in Oregon anyways, the way it works is your, your roommate, any of your family members, or a cop can say you're insane and you need to get your guns taken before you go out and kill people. So, no due process, no mental health involved, no mental health can get you off either. They have no clear way of how to get the guns back. So, then we had 41, HB 4145, and these, these are all, by the way, from the same people who two years later said, we don't want to take your guns, we just want common sense gun legislation. So SB 40, 4145 expanded and redefined what a family is <coughs> for the purpose of confiscation. So now, in Oregon, if you're 60 years old and your high school girlfriend, she's a family member now for the purposes of confiscating your gun, they can put a restraining order on you and have your guns taken. We all know this is about control, right? <laughs> it's all about control. They have absolutely no right to take your guns. So we, we started doing this, once we once we did the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance, we got a call from the Tenth Amendment Center. And by the way, I didn't start this, my buddy Rob Taylor did. I want to put that out there because I don't want to take credit and I don't deserve it. But I am his second. <laughs> uh, where was it? Oh, it's the Tenth Amendment Center. And they said, hey, this is great. This is great law, man, but all gun laws are illegal. Why don't we help you write one to, that protects all guns. So they wrote, wrote the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. And, which by the way, we're working on right now. I, my county actually has it on the ballot in November. We would have had five or six more, but you know what happened. So they wrote, wrote us a law and our lawyers corrected it so that they could defend it in Oregon courts. And by the way, we're getting, last time they, did, they just laughed at us. All The left laughed at us. They let it go through the county clerk's office and uh, They'll never get nowhere, they won't pass it. Then we pass eight out of 10. Now we have to fight the court every damn time. Excuse my language. So we've got quite a few battles ahead of us. This Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance, what it does, makes it illegal to, for the county to, with manpower, donations, buildings, anything, to enforce any gun law with the exception of machine guns and felons, because we figured we could get that. And a few court, court orders. But you get you, you get your due process now. And of course, you know, same thing happened when I filed it and said you'll never get the signatures. A month and a half later, record time, we have two years. A month and a half I turned in the signatures. Because we were recalling Kate Brown, and everybody wants to get rid of that. Even Democrats were signing that, by the way. In fact, we're recalling her again. I, don't, I, think, I think they jumped the gun a little bit, but oh well. <laughs> so they're saying it's, it's unconstitutional. Well, they had a, they, had, they get two weeks to take you to court. Nobody took us to court, so they're thinking they're going to take us afterwards. But that's okay because this is a sanctuary ordinance for a reason. If they attack our law. We can attack their sanctuary ordinance because we got some of the have some of the same writing in it. But the reason I'm telling all y'all this is I, I have friends up here, and they say that this is never going to happen in Idaho. I just saw who got elected for mayor in Boise. That's how it starts, and, and now Bloomberg will double down. They'll bring millions in the state. They'll, they'll flip your Senate, get you get them a supermajority. We have the most tyrannical, crazy ass governor. Let, leading the most mentally ill supermajority in the history of the world. They're trying to, every session, they try to fulfill the Communist Manifesto in one session. We have blocked them the last two years because we got the Republican Senate to walk out and deny them a So now, now they're trying to shove cap and trade down our throat, force, force vaccinations, and, and their last gun bill was 978, and it had about 50 gun laws in it. First, first thing, it, it, it confiscated every firearm there is, <laughs> pretty much. And then they want to do these lockup bills so you can't defend yourself in your own home, which Heller has already said is unconstitutional. 
So I'm here to tell you that if anybody here wants to be a chief petitioner in your county, get a hold of me or get a hold of Rockton. I will leave some cards somewhere. I'll put them over there at that readout news booth. Get a hold of me. We will get you in touch with the right people. We'll help you start it in your county. Now, y'all have really good laws to protect you from the federal, from the federal gun laws, but you don't have any protecting the county from the state. And we're, you know, after this, we're going to the cities. <laughs> I mean, Second Amendment should be obvious, but obviously it isn't. There's 30,000 gun laws that are all illegal. So we want to do that. I've called Virginia. I've talked to Philip Van Cleve, tried to, and they're looking at it right now. I've called North Carolina. I've talked to C, C, C. B. McKinnon. They had a see all these other guys that spread across the nation. They're doing resolutions, and a resolution is about as powerful as a New Year's resolution. How, how many of those were for y'all? This is an ordinance and it has teeth. If they violate this, the officer gets fined $2,000, his department gets fined $4,000, and he can sue him. So triple, triple your money's worth, I guess. So please think about it. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I know a lot of people don't like initiatives. We didn't either because it's kind of a leftist tool, but why not use their own tools against them? They hate it now, by the way. <laughs> now, before, before I go, I got, I got to talk about constitutional rights. I wasn't going to do this, but and no offense. So in the beginning, we were in, the, we were in a state of nature, which means we were in a state of war, because there's always somebody bigger, stronger, and more numerous that can take your stuff or kill you. So we decided to create government to protect our rights. That's the only reason for government, to protect our rights. The problem is, the government has an insatiable appetite for power and control, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's why Jefferson said you need a revolution once in a while. So our government has grown. One of the, one of the, one of the things we did to, put, to keep the government in line was we, our founders wrote a Bill of Limitations on Government. Unfortunately, they called it the Bill of Rights. If you read it, it, it gives no rights. Your rights come from God and nature. They cannot take them, even though they've gotten everybody fooled that they can. Obviously, they can take them by force and illegally, but that's how they're going to have to do it to me. They're going to have to shoot me, take my rights. So, once the government gets that big, they take you right back into a state of war or rebellion. And our government's outgrown themselves, and we need to remember that. We need to remember that liberty is the inherent possession of men. It's not government gift. We don't elect kings, even though Kate Brown and I don't, the Washington Governor Inslee thinks they do. We do not elect kings. And that, that goes for the Supreme Court too, by the way. Everybody thinks the Supreme Court is the ultimate arbiter of the Constitution. It is not. The Constitution is, and the people are the ultimate arbiter. Not trying, uh oh. Amen. <laughs> so, please. We gotta get everybody out to vote. When people vote, conservatives win, man. We gotta get the NAVs out to vote. And our, our county, last time President Trump ran for, he ran, what was that, three years ago. We turned our county red. Our county sits right next to Multnomah County. They are so people. We're sandwiched in between the two black, blue counties. And we're, guess what, it's even getting better. We, I mean, then we turned around, got a say-so, the signatures for say-so in a month and a half. I knock on wood, I hope it passes by at least 70%. All the groups in Columbia County, all the all the leftist groups are born in Columbia County. We've got Rural Oregon Organizing Project, which by the way, watch out for them. They're funded by Soros. They got about 75 groups behind them. They will come here. We've got River Keepers, we got several other groups that <laughs> but anyways. Yeah, please get everybody out to vote. Let's let's win this next election. I know you heard it before, this is the most important election of your life coming up. It's probably going to be that way every election. And uh, thank you for letting me come here. It's an honor. God bless you all.